The moment we've been all waiting for. First review of the racket that is also a pick for my tournament. And it's a combo pocket review because I'll mention four rackets from the line. Welcome to my cave. Grab your popcorn. Let's go. So we basically have TF4305 and 315 options. Both models come with two different string patterns, 16x19 and 18x20. The difference between uh, 315 and 305 grams versions uh, is mainly in wave distribution. 305 is lighter and head heavier, but the swing wave is higher, so the overall feel is heftier. The stability is better, um, the twist wave is higher, 305 feels almost like if it had slightly thicker beam, like maybe speed MP, but the performance and touch is aimed towards the blade users. TF40-315 on the other side is heavier and more headlight, slightly lower swing wave, uh, so the acceleration is much better and you can manipulate the head much easier. So you have better spin potential and it's easier to switch from offense to defense and from defense to offense. Uh, it's aimed mainly towards Prestige or Yonex Percept 97 users. Rating power between those models uh, is a bit tricky because one of the factors is how fast you can swing each racket. With lower swing wave, it's easier to accelerate, but you take out some of its uh, pure power from the mass. I think it is crucial to match the racket to your type of swing, so you don't have to constantly push yourself to something that feels like overswinging, or if the racket is too heavy, it might feel that it's eating up too much of your energy uh, to keep up your casual or situational swing speeds. Uh, but let me say this. For pure power and court penetration, I would choose uh, TF40, uh, 305, 1820. Highest swing wave, highest twist wave, biggest sweet zone. Next would probably be TF40, 305, 16 by 19. With a slightly more open string pattern, it is easier uh, to generate spin and the ball will naturally go slightly higher. Uh, if you hit higher, the ball will most likely land deeper. So you might think, okay, it's probably giving me more power. But in fact, it's the launch angle that is giving you an illusion of a powerful frame. Next would be TF40, 1820, 315 gram version. And the most anemic racket, without a doubt, is the 16x19 315 TF40 with a small sweet zone and very low power potential. TF40 1820 is endorsed by... Arthur Rinderknech. I can add here that he is using a leather grip and a Technifiber razor coil string. Uh, I don't know his final specs, but if we take under consideration that uh, he's an ex-tennis college player, I think the chances are that uh, he's using something very similar to what we mortals can purchase. I had both 1820 models in my hand and surprisingly they felt quite similar in motion. Uh, I demoed the 315 uh, version because that's my usual direction uh, and even though I don't have a footage of this test I must say the slices of uh, this racket uh, were absolutely amazing. Maybe the best slices I ever experienced from any racket uh, I tried so far. The racket felt rather heavy Heavier than Dunlop CX200 Tour, slightly heavier than Head Prestige MP360 Plus from the past, but it's also more stable with more plow through. The feel is very solid, that's probably thanks to thicker beam, 22mm, more stability, more power, but less maneuverability. Uh, I would add more weight to the handle to find easier acceleration. I think 320 grams with a more headlight setup, like 305 millimeters uh, balance, sounds like a good idea. For a 98 square inches racket, the head size felt closer to more traditional 95, but the response is slightly tweaked towards pure strike, so you get a bit of that 
trampoline effect, but it's not as big as with Babolat frames. Stairs were okay, nothing to report here, but uh, it's just average good. Mm, my friend struggled here due to heavier feel. He's a Prestige 360 Plus MP1820 user. Maybe sticker beam doesn't cut uh, as good uh, through the air as uh, with Prestige and its 20 mm thickness. The key takeaway is that TF40 315 1820 is the IG Prestige MP on steroids. And it's still much easier to move around than Blade 1820. Now to my favorite, the 1619 TF40. 315 grams is endorsed only by me and my tournament, uh, but uh, it's enough to cut through the noise and uh, stay in your head for a very long time, forever. Uh, hype level. Even without the crazy endorsements, uh, I feel pretty uh, excited about this line, mainly because the design is very classic for a more traditional player with a longer swing path, uh, I feel like there is not that many similar rackets on the market. Uh, tennis brands, whenever they come up with a 1619 frame, I feel like they tend to over design it, uh, offer a bit too much. Um, TF40 is tempered and it's a tool for those who want to control every aspect of their game but need a bit more help than they get from other similar rackets. When I play with uh, TF40 315 there is one player that I keep thinking about. Fernando Ferdasco. <laughs> I think he also plays with uh, similar specs so we think alike. He used to play with Technifiber frames and maybe it was his prime level. Unfortunately, TF40 315 16x19 falls into the platform racket category, uh, so I had to customize it. In stock form, it slightly lacks in plow through and stability. Just by feel, I added some lead at 3 and 9, just like Ferdasco, <laughs> uh, and some uh, at 12 o'clock. It played much better, the, the spin potential was amazing, I was producing much heavier ball with still tight launch angle, uh, much lower than with Angel, still similar to Blade and Radical, but with a different feel while swinging, more similar to Prestige line. This hybrid of Blade, Radical, Response and Prestige swing style gave me a very enjoyable ride. Uh, the ball was always listening to me, the racket was still very easy to move around, the stability was improved and the plow through was increased, which helped me play better uh, backhands and throw my hands towards and through the ball. If the frame is too light, I feel like it's harder to relax my swing and I become less consistent with my ball placement, sometimes to the net, sometimes uh, to the fence. <laughs> so I need that compact feel in my hands. The power potential of the frame is below average, uh, which increases the control, yes, but, but also makes the frame slightly more demanding. Special traits. Feel, of course. Uh, in my opinion, this racket could have the best feel from all my selected rackets for the tournament. But to put in comparison some other kings of feel, we could put Prestige here, of course, but Prestige is battery smooth, battery soft at contact, while TF40 is just solid. Uh, it's like a blade without any additional materials to make the uh, feel more muted. Um, it's kind, of, it's kind of stiffer, but not harsh or jarring. Uh, absolutely no vibrations uh, on contact. Uh, that's probably because the frame is foam field, and as you might already know, I love foam field rackets. Uh, TF40 315 is similar to Yonex Percept 97, but a bit more complete with 5 grams more. The feel of the ball on the string bed is very direct and consistent. The feedback is not, uh, not too muted or too spongy, so that's why I love it so much. 
Secondary trade, uh, TF40 16 by 19 offers a perfect combo for 1820 players that want to try 16 by 19 frames without any issues. Uh, or 16 by 19 players that are not quite comfortable with 18 by 20 patterns but need similar level of precision. I feel like I fall to this second category because I grew up with a 1820 blade but my best results were actually with a 16 by 19 rackets. Uh, so I need something in between and it's very hard to find this combination. TF40 is, is very close. Uh, maybe we can see it slightly as a hybrid of Head Prestige and Extreme Tour. In general, Technifiber frames feel a bit like a hybrid of Head Racket and Wilson Racket. TF40 315 uh, 16 by 19 is top of the tops when it comes to 16 by 19 control oriented rackets. Um, Yonex Perset 97 comes to my mind as well, but I play slightly better with TF40. Something about the feel with this frame is very addictive, uh, but the forgiveness and stability in stock form probably goes to Perset 97. So let's go now to place for improvement. Uh, for me, it was serves and stability. Uh, please, Tech Fiber, if you're watching, Release TF40 315 with a higher swing wave. Uh, between 290 to 95 swing wave at strong would be perfect. Ball is just too easy to attack. So I feel like I often have to run a bit more. <laughs> and I usually run a lot. So that's something I need to work on. And compared to, to TF40 305 with 16 by 19 string pattern, I would say the 305 is much better in stock form ready to compete at higher level because the stability is simply better. However, I prefer the feel of the TF40 315 version. Uh, it is easier to customize TF40 305 because the only thing you have to figure out is how much weight you want to add to the handle. Uh, the, the feel will be more complete and uh, the swing will be uh, more rapid uh, in motion. However, the slightly more bulky feel that I believe comes from higher twist wave is still there. Uh, TF40 315 is much harder to customize and to find your specific setup. Because the static wave is already quite high, you need to think about both stability and plow through at the same time without crossing the point of where the frame is too heavy. But I feel like the potential, at least for my game, is slightly higher. I feel more connected and it's easier to manipulate the head uh, and make micro adjustments during my swing. So that's it for the review. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe as it helps me grow. See you soon.